My father grew up around cat boats, sailing beetle cats around Bristol Harbor and bought himself an old wooden cat boat that he raced in Rhode Island in his late 20s and early 30s. I was just fat, infatuated with the, the hull shape of the cat boat. There are very few people who can touch the helm of a boat and know what's wrong with it or what's right with it and make it go better. Breck was one of those folks. Breck was not a yacht designer by training, but he intuitively knew what was going to make a boat really perform well. He got into fiberglass boat building in the late 50s, which was new technology at the time, and really wanted to incorporate that into his love of cat boats. In the early 60s, he came upon a, a station frames of an old wooden cat boat that he acquired and uh, set them up and made some modern, major modifications so that it could be built in fiberglass. He would make changes in the, the lines of the boat, the shear line he changed, the, the bow entry he changed, the cabin house he changed, uh, things like that he, he made changes to. That's how Breck sort of conceptualized and put the boat together. He, his biggest problem was he didn't want wooden spars because wooden spars are heavy because the, the bow of the boat had to be so full of forward to act as flotation to support that heavy wooden spar that was up there in the bow. We were driving down the highway looking at the aluminum poles along the highway. So he pulled over and I looked around and sure enough at the base of it, there was a name of a company uh, and a manufacturer and when he got back, uh, he called them up and he explained what he wanted. They said yes, they could, we could do that and that was the difference. The light aluminum as opposed to as heavy spruce made all the difference in the world. And so that's, that's how we came up with the, the aluminum mass. They're just basically street lamp posts. <laughs> Fiberglass was new technology at the time. A lot of the old wooden boat builders you know, didn't trust it or it wasn't, weren't sure how long it was going to last. Breck got a lot of blowback on the cat boat. Everybody was poo-pooing fiberglass in those days, those damn Clorox bottles, you know. <laughs> it was looked at upon very skeptically, but after a while, as we began getting more orders and building them, it became more and more accepted and people wanted to get out of wooden boats. The maintenance on them, there's maintenance on a fiberglass one too, but not as much as on the wooden ones. It's just, it's just grown. Both of the companies started with is the Sandlink, the 18-foot cat, uh, which is our middle size uh, cat boat. Mostly a day sailor, although there's a cabin down below where uh, you can you do some overnights or you know, even some people have done some extended cruising on. We also do a 22-foot cat, which uh, came out in 1965. That's a bit more of a cruising boat. The inboard diesel engine is standard, galley, marine head with a holding tank, water tanks, good size berths. A uh, very comfortable boat for cruising. We also do a 15-foot cat boat called a Sandpiper, which is uh, primarily a day sailor, although it's been used quite, quite often for racing these days. It was a nice old traditional boat, and Breck loved them. Breck thought that they were just, that was a neat thing, and this has been his, his project for many years, was to see if he could come up with a glass boat to, to do it. And he, he, he did it with the Sanderling in 62.